Entrepreneurs from all around the world have been bringing their businesses to Dubai and the UAE in general. And today, even with the news about the UAE's new corporate tax rate, I'm going to share with you the benefits of incorporating your company in Dubai. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And if you're new to our channel, definitely check out a lot of our other resources because simply incorporating your company offshore, no matter what the tax rate is, does not necessarily change your tax status. You have to follow what we call the tax friendly quadrant to make sure that you are getting the full benefits of moving your company offshore whether that's the UAE or anywhere else. So assuming we're talking about the idea of where does your company pay tax and everything else is in order, I want to share with you my thoughts as someone who uh, has a company in our org chart in the UAE, in a free zone, uh, what the benefits are from my perspective and a few things that you should be aware of so, because no place is perfect. Now, there's been news recently that the UAE is imposing a new 9% tax rate on corporations and as with anything, most folks are just looking at the headlines and they're saying, oh my goodness, why would I ever incorporate in the UAE again? The reality is there's going to be kind of a two-tier system where companies that do business in the mainland or companies that do business with other mainland entities are going to be subject to this 9% tax from mid-2023. If you are an international business that does your business outside of the UAE and you meet the criteria of the free zones, uh, you will be exempt as of now from this 9% tax. And so the first reason to incorporate in uh, Dubai or in any of the UAE's free zones going forward is that it will be tax-free for you and the company. So again, going back to my tax-friendly quadrant, you and where you live impacts your company. So if you're the company owner, if you're the employee, if you're the director, you can't just start your company in the UAE, go back and live in uh, Vancouver or in New York or in you know Sydney and say, well, that's great, my company's in the UAE. Yeah, they figured that one out. I know there's some people on YouTube who talk about, oh, put the company in your brother's name. You know, not really a smart idea. Obviously, there's some situations where you know you, nominee ownership can work, but you know, something so you know, unsophisticated as that is really not the solution. It's not going to work. But if you want a place to move, you can go to the UAE and you, you can run your company, but you don't have to, okay? Now, uh, the second benefit, if we assume that free zones continue to be tax-free, is you've got a simple process in the UAE. Uh, you know, we've had companies in different jurisdictions, and we've been very careful about not having too much work. You know what, for me... I don't mind paying a little bit of something. Now, I don't want to be Elon Musk who pays $11 billion and Bernie Sanders shouts that some nurse paid $5,000 but her tax rate was higher. Uh, but I would be willing to pay something. Uh, certainly the less you can pay, the better. But for me, what's more important is simplicity. In the free zones, at least a number of the free zones, you have a pretty simple process where you're not you know, paying tax and then they refund most of it. You're not screwing around with the deductions. You're not even, in many cases, dealing with audits, which can be rather frustrating. You have to get bank statements, you have to get stuff signed off on, and the auditors always move at a turtle's pace, and you're always at the last... And then they're shouting at you at the last minute because, why haven't you given us this stuff for the... You know, I gave you this stuff six months ago, right? You guys are moving like tortoises. Uh, so you've got simplicity, which I think, I mean, even if you had to pay a couple percentage points in tax, uh, you're seeing some of the flat tax deals for corporations like in Labuan that have gone away. But even if you have to pay a couple percentage points, um, that would be better if the process was simple. In the UAE free zones, you still get the benefits. And by the way, just to clarify, the free zones are not all in Dubai. There are some high-level free zones that are in Dubai. There are some that are, that are across the country. So tax-free continues for free zones. Simplicity, which is important to any business owner. More than just the tax savings, your time is money, and that works here. The third benefit is you get a residence permit. Now, the cool thing about the UAE is you don't really have to live there all the time. You need to pop in every once in a while, but it's not really very substantial. A couple of days a year, you can keep your residence permit open. Uh, if you want to live there full time, you can do that. And so once again, I go back to my tax-friendly quadrant. You have to live somewhere. And if it's not in the aforementioned you know, Vancouver or New York or Sydney, you're going to have to find a place. If you're from one of these high-tax countries, you have to find a place to move. And depending on where you're from, they may want you uh, to say, I'm leaving your country and here's where I'm going. And so you have the opportunity to become tax resident in the UAE 
if you spend six months there. Again, you don't have to just to keep the residence. The residence permit gives the option to go there. It gives you an easy way to get in. You know, if, if there's some kind of pandemic going on or something, residents, I think, will certainly be prioritized above tourists. Uh, you have access to opening bank accounts, both personal and certainly for the free zone company. It's a requirement generally to have. Uh, to have that residence permit. But if you want to live there because you have to live somewhere to, uh, for your personal taxes and or if you just like the idea of living in Dubai and all that it has to offer, uh, then you can do that. You can get a residence permit. And there isn't any conversation about taxing individuals on this new you know, mainland corporate tax increase. They will continue to be covered. And so you can live there and take a salary from your company and uh, you can have a very nice lifestyle, very international lifestyle. You can fly anywhere in the world. You've got a lot of access, and that can be your home, and you can secure that you know, on a multi-year basis. Uh, the fourth thing is, as I mentioned, you can much more easily open personal and business bank accounts. One thing people don't realize is that back during the global financial crisis, the UAE came in and said, you know what? We're going to protect your bank deposits. Don't worry. As hundreds of banks were failing in the United States, they came in. You've got a number of rules about how you know, banks in the UAE need to be very substantial, there's a lot of different rules there, but the government came in and said, listen, we, we want to make sure that we've got a good reputation, we're going we're gonna to make sure that you're covered. And so you can open bank accounts there. Uh, you've got some pretty good banks there that you can set up accounts. You can do private wealth, um, you can just do transactional accounts, you can do business, you can do personal. And so certainly I found that UAE banks in terms of running a business are a bit more laborious in terms of paperwork in terms of like sending invoices. If you're used to banking in, for example, the United States, where, where people don't really ask you a lot, for a lot of documentation, you're going to have a little bit more difficulty in the UAE. So for, for a company like ours that has an in-house finance team, it's not that difficult. If you're running it all on your own, you know, it may be a little bit difficult. Um, uh, so the banking is good. The fifth reason you might want to consider it is because, again, you don't have to live there. Optionality to me is very important. Let's say you, you are leaving your country and you're not going to pay taxes there, and maybe they don't care where you are. Let's say you're from the United States, for example, where they just say, listen, if you're almost never here, then you get the, uh, the foreign earned income exclusion, you can set up your company, and it's obviously more complicated for Americans than for others, but you know, they're not going to necessarily tell you that you have to live full-time in the UAE to take advantage of some of the tax exclusions. And so you have the optionality. Now, you know, they're starting to inch towards offering citizenship in the UAE, I would imagine most people watching this probably wouldn't want that. They'd want to keep the residence permit. But I think that the residence permit regime will continue and will probably become more flexible in the future uh, as they try and diversify and go, you know, go just beyond being totally tax-free. I think you'll see more opportunities to secure residence. But unlike many countries, you don't have to live there to keep it. Uh, and the last thing is that you can hire people from everywhere. We've done this. So try doing this in Malta with a low tax rate. Try doing this in even Hong Kong. It's not that easy necessarily. Uh, a lot of tax-friendly countries, you know, where to get the team together. One of the things that I think, you know, this 9% tax rate is tied into the new global minimum tax. One thing I think it's worth looking at is more strict what are called economic substance requirements coming forth in the future where, you know, people who are just running companies with people all over the world, number one, are going to find out that they potentially have uh, issues having people working in high tax countries. If you have a couple guys working in Germany as so-called freelancers, that could potentially tie your company to the tax net and people are going to start realizing that. On the flip side, you're going to want to see companies that are benefiting from very low tax rates, such as in a free zone, from having some substance in a country where they're actually claiming they're doing business. And so a country like a Hong Kong, for example, or a territory like Hong Kong, or a country like Malta, where you know, you're more limited in who you can bring in. For example, in Malta, it's gonna be a lot easier to bring in EU citizens who are potentially more expensive, there's more, more labor laws are more difficult, et cetera. Being able to put people from anywhere in the world into the UAE is a great advantage where you can get pretty much anyone a visa. You're gonna pay for it, but you can bring people in. And so if we have a team you know, in Serbia and Georgia and Armenia, we have Brazilians, we have people from all over the world, we can get them visas and they can all be under one roof, which not only helps us to build, if we want it, a community of people in one place where, you know, it's maybe a Brazilian doesn't want to go to Serbia or maybe they can't get a residence permit. You know, if you're a Montenegrin working for us remotely and, you know, why, why would Serbia give you a work permit, right? We have enough Montenegrins. Um, you can do that in Dubai. And so you have that multicultural vibe. Uh, you can get people residence permits and it's pretty straightforward. And it's, it's a selling point for sure. Now, the challenge is, um, you know, if they were to impose taxes later, and we've just seen 
that on the on the mainland side they will. Uh, you know, do you want to stay there? Um, certainly, it's up to you to determine. Would you live in Dubai in a vacuum? And I have some people that we've worked with who would. I have other people who would say, listen, uh, you know, for a couple percentage points more, I'll go somewhere else, and I will deal with the other issues that you mentioned. So that's certainly something to consider. You're not going to get citizenship if you went and lived in Ireland, for example, and ran your company in Ireland and benefited from their, you know, relatively low tax rate. You could work towards one of the world's best citizenships. Um, that would be the case in many places. Not a lot of, you know, zero tax countries have citizenship. So Dubai, you know, the UAE is not rare in that case. But there are certainly countries where you could go and pay a, a low rate of tax and you could work towards citizenship. Uh, that's not the case in the UAE. I will also say you probably want to bring your own talent. Certainly, you know, the UAE, for folks who watch our channel who are more entrepreneurial, you'll probably find more of a corporate vibe. Uh, and, you know, the benefit being you can bring people from anywhere in the world. And so don't just think, hey, I've got to go to Dubai and hire people who are already in Dubai. I can bring people to Dubai. I can actually bring sand to the beach. And so if you consider that those things may require a bit of an adjustment, I think you've got still a lot of benefits from incorporating in the UAE. You don't have to live there. Uh, you have a place that's trying to be pretty open, trying to keep up, more so than maybe some of the jurisdictions in Asia, which have lost some of their luster, uh, more so than a jurisdiction like a Panama, which is perhaps kind of difficult, more so than some of the island jurisdictions like the BVI that are still going and where it's going to be harder in the future to say, hey, we're doing this work from the BVI. So the UAE is interesting in many ways. Those are some benefits of incorporating in Dubai and some things that you should consider. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply. Learn about our unique tried and true process. Garnered over years of experience and learn how you can become our client.